Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're just getting started in an amazing series called The Cosmic Conflict, a conflict that started in heaven and now impacts planet Earth. Our topic today shows the difference between the rebellious nature of Satan and the fallen angels and the character of God. Our topic, Motivated by love. And I'm glad you joined us today. And I'm excited because one of our team members is going to be teaching. And Brittany, we're glad you're going to be sharing with us a beautiful topic, Motivated by Love, today. And welcome to the team. Good to see you. We're glad that you're here. This is a really important series on the cosmic controversy, the great battle between good and evil. We're glad we've got some remote team members. Rodney, always good to have you with us. Travis, Good to have you back. Glad you're here. And Leah, good to have you with us too. And we're so thankful that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family wherever you are. And for this series on the cosmic conflict, we have a valuable resource for you. It's a book entitled The Great Controversy. It's been translated into more than 100 languages. So maybe you even have a friend who, who speaks uh, Hungarian or maybe, maybe she speaks uh, I'm Harrick, and you say, I would like to get a copy of that important book for him or for her. Just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the free gift tab, and that resource is available in more than 100 languages so that you can share it with your friends, get a copy for yourself. We're glad, though, that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And here are just a few emails we've received recently. One from Valerie in Zimbabwe. She writes and says, My husband and I have watched Hope Sabbath School since it started. Wow. Wow. It's a great way to open Sabbath each week with the study of God's Word. Amen. God bless you all. Well, Valerie, thanks for writing to us from the beautiful country of Zimbabwe. We're glad that you and your husband are part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a... Here's a note that touched my heart, and I want to share it with you. It's from Sonia. Um, she's living in the southwest of France, but she's from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She writes and she says, I always watch programs on Hope Channel, including Hope Sabbath School. Mm-hmm. By the way, she began by saying, Hello, Hope Sabbath School team. <laughs> Hello. I knew she wanted a wave. I'm a young adult from the Philippines here in my village, far away from a church. Mm -hmm. Please pray for me. Mm -hmm. I need your prayers. Mm -hmm. Thank you and God bless you all. Well, Sonia, we're glad that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. I know you're a long way from home, but you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. We'll be praying for you that God would continue to bless you and direct you. Thanks for writing to us. Here's a little card uh, from a donor couple in uh, Maryland, Mm -hmm. in the United States. And they write, Thank you for your willingness to share with us the study of the Word of God in its purest form Mm -hmm. through Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, by the grace of God, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord continue to bless you and your ministry for Him and a donation of $2,000 Amen. to bless the global evangelistic media Amen. ministry. And I just want to say thank you. You know who you are. We don't mention names, but thank you for being part of this great miracle of God. We're in about 200 countries around the world. And, and thank you to each one of you. If you say, Derek, I'd like to be part of that, go to our website, hopetv.org, click on the donate button. Whether you can give $5 or $500, God will bless you as you invest in eternity. Thank you so much. One last note from Wesley in Jamaica. Anybody from Jamaica, Nicole? Do you want to give a wave to Wesley in Jamaica? All right. Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Greetings from Jamaica. I just want to thank you for allowing the Lord to use you to bring hope to the world. You make it easier for me to study and understand the Bible. That's why we do what we do. God bless you. Well, Wesley, thanks for writing to us. Thank you, each one. And you say, Derek, I don't know if you want my email, but we do. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.com.
Daughter, we'd love to hear from you. Right now, we'd like to hear you sing. Our theme song is taken from the prophet Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. It's an encouragement in this cosmic controversy to seek the Lord while he may be found. Let's sing it together. Seek the Lord while he may song, I, I thought of that verse in Revelation 12 that they overcame the enemy mm. by the blood of the Lamb mm. and the word of their testimony. And I thought the next time the enemy comes upon us like a flood, just remember the song, seek the Lord mm -hmm. while he may be found, mm -hmm. call upon him while he's near. Amen. Brittany, why don't you lead us in prayer as we begin our study? Let's seek the Lord together. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for the privilege of knowing you Amen. as our Father. Amen. And we thank you, dear Jesus, that you have given us the victory in this cosmic conflict, that you gave up your life so that we could live and that we could live an abundant life. Mm -hmm. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to come and be with us now as we study your word, that you would open our minds and our hearts, not only to understand, but to be changed Amen. by this message of Amen. love today. And that we would not just be changed ourselves, but we would share what we've learned with someone else. Amen. We ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, as we get started together today, I wanted to ask, um, what is one of the greatest acts of love that you have ever received? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know for myself, uh, one of the greatest ask, acts that stands out in my memory is when I was serving as a student missionary in the Philippines for a year. Mm -hmm. And I was up in a remote village in the mountains. And one day I was hiking through the village and I was looking for some friends. And I had to go up a mountainside to look for them. And as I was walking along, I stepped in something that I didn't realize until I came to a group of friends. And they started to plug their noses. And they said, look, teacher, you've stepped in something. <laughs> and I said, well, it's probably just a dog, you know. And they said, no, teacher, that's human. Uh, you know, leftovers. And <laughs> I um, was feeling a little bit embarrassed because over there they don't have the sanitation that we have. Um, they don't have the, the indoor plumbing and things like that. Um, and one of the ladies who was the matriarch of our village, she was all, at all of the deliveries. She would go and help be the midwife and deliver the babies. And she was one of the most respected women our, in our village. She ran to her house, her little hut, and she got a jug of water. And to get this water, she had to hike quite a ways to this uh, place where the water was collected. Mm -hmm. So she had this precious jug of water. She came running up to me and she started to pour it on my shoes mm. and she used her bare foot oh. to start wiping <laughs> off the, the wow. human remains from my foot. And I was so humbled, I tried to stop her. I said, no, no, don't do that. I can clean it when I get home. She said, no, no. And she cleaned wow. it for me. And I felt Beautiful. so humbled and Amen. so touched. And I was like, 
I've come here to show them the love of Jesus mm. and she just showed me what Jesus did when he washed his disciples feet yeah. mm -hmm. and I have never forgotten what she did for me and every time that I mm. participate in communion and foot washing I think about this lovely woman mm. named Minan Larita mm. and the impact that she had on my life mm. wow. and as we study together today we're going to be learning about mm. um, the whole the cosmic conflict how God's character is all about love Amen. and every Everything that he did is motivated by love, mm -hmm. and he wants us to join him in showing that love to this world. Wow. Amen. Amen. The first part of our lesson is looking at a revelation of the immeasurable love of God. I got a little glimpse of that in this woman's life, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to get a bigger and clearer picture today through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And as we get started, I have a question for the team. What is the basis of God's kingdom? If we could boil God's kingdom down to just one or two points, what is the basis of his kingdom? Mm. Uh, Rodney, you had a comment? I would say the love of God and the, the opportunity that he gives to us uh, to choose, to choose right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's the basis of God's kingdom. Wow. Now, what about we the know. basis of the opposite of mm. Lucifer or Satan, mm. as we studied last time? What is the basis of his kingdom, mm. Jeffrey? Uh, one of them is selfishness, mm. pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Selfishness and pride. Yeah. Nicole, did you want to add to that? I would say fear mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he uses violence, he uses lies. So if the fear would be a basis for his, mm -hmm. for his mm -hmm. kingdom. I just thought of just when you mentioned that, that perfect love cast cast out, out fear. fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. that, that's the victory mm -hmm. that comes right. through, mm -hmm. through God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Puya, would you like to add to what was shared already? Yes. You know, when we say the, the, the basis of God's kingdom is love, it's very easy to take this concept for granted mm. because in a lot of people's mind, the basis of God's kingdom is His sovereignty or His power. Mm. But when mm -hmm. we look at the scripture, the actual basis of God's kingdom is His love. Mm -hmm. It's not about control. That's but right. the enemy, in contrast to God's kingdom, mm -hmm. wants to have that control. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're going to look at some verses that will give us a clearer picture of God's kingdom and how it is different from the kingdoms of this world and how it's very opposite of Satan's kingdom. So let's go mm -hmm. to Luke chapter 19 as we get started. We're going to mm -hmm. look at Luke 19 verses 41 through 44. And I'm going to ask Leah if she'd be willing to read that for us. Luke 19, 41 through 44. All right, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Hmm. Thank you, Leah. Hmm. We're going to read another verse. Before we discuss these verses, we're going to look at several of them and then we'll discuss them together. Hmm. The next verse that I'd like to look at is Matthew 23, verses 37 through 38. And I'm going to ask Gladys to read that for us. Matthew 23, verses 37 through 38, please. And I'm reading from the New International Version and it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Mm -hmm. Look, your house is left to you desolate. Mm -hmm. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reading that for us, Gladys. The next verse that we're going to look at is John chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses 33 through 36. And Jeffrey, would you be willing to read that for us? Yes, John 11, verse 33 through 36. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, 
Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last verse that we're going to consider together is in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Mark 10, 13 through 16. And I'm, I'm going to ask Travis to read that for us. Mark 10, verses 13 through 16, please. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. So as we look at all of these verses, they're all from the Gospels, right? Yeah. And they're all quotes from mm -hmm. things that Jesus himself said, mm -hmm. right? What do we learn about God's kingdom from mm -hmm. these verses? Yes, Sabina. One thing that stands out to me is that he's not controlling. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, when we read uh, how disappointed he was as he wept over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. one may be wondering, like, why is it that all these times he was just sending prophets instead of just doing something to move people's hearts in the direction he wanted. But instead we see clearly that by his regret and, and, and sadness towards that, that he really, he, he does as much as he can to woo us in love, but he's never going to really control or uh, manipulate someone's mm -hmm. heart to do mm -hmm. what he would like uh, them to do instead. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the opposite mm -hmm. of the enemy's kingdom. Right. Thank you for right. pointing that out, yeah. Sabina. Harold, you also wanted to add to that. Yeah, I, I see uh, faithfulness because we see that Jesus, I mean, God, the Godhead, is the one always pursuing us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think in First John 4 it says that we, we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we see that Jesus is constantly, through the prophets, even before he came, I mean, physically, he was just pressing on like, please, mm -hmm. come, come, come. Mm -hmm. he, never, he never gives up. He mm -hmm. just keeps on. Of course, yeah. there's a time when we can't seek him, which that's when we, we die. Mm -hmm. So he will continue on until that day happens. But mm -hmm. we know that we can trust that in one thing, that he will always be faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. the character of God's And I think it's really important because when we say he's pursuing us, some people think he's chasing us mm -hmm. to get us, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, uh, to punish us, to mm -hmm. harass us. But he's he's pursuing us in love, right? right? Yeah, and and that's the beautiful picture to me. It's kind of astounding to see the Creator of the heavens and the earth, who comes to humanity, having little children climb up on his lap. Right. It's just a very tender picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, of, of a loving God. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the times that we noticed him weeping, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That he's not just a God who, oh, this is happening to you, but I'm comfortable where I am. But he actually mm -hmm. comes and joins us, mm -hmm. becomes right. one of us. And then he doesn't just sympathize, but he empathizes with us. He, mm -hmm. His heart was so moved mm -hmm. by what he could see was going to happen in the future. And also when his, his best friend, uh, passed away, Lazarus and his, his their sisters mm -hmm. were crying. He was crying with them. So that just shows yeah. how intimate of a connection he has with us and how he empathizes with us. Mm -hmm. Sabina, you'd like to add to that yes, as well. Yes, and adding to what you were sharing, um, God's heart breaks really towards us. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you see, every one of those situations in, uh, in which we are looking here, His desire is to see our well-being. Mm -hmm. right? Really, mm -hmm. this picture of Him having the children coming to Him, for instance, as, as Derek was uh, sharing, for me, I imagined kids at that time, they really didn't have that much access to a lot of things, the way they were treated in society. They were outcasts even in many ways. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Jesus, he makes his way out to make sure that everybody understood that they were to be integrated and that his heart would break towards that mm -hmm. is again a demonstration mm -hmm. of how he, uh, what he suffers about is our suffering ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. And Travis, I see that you have your hand raised as well. Feel free to share with us. I think sometimes it's easy uh, to think of God's love as an attribute of God, 
like, you know, God's love, like it's something that's a part of him. But the Bible says God is love. It's not just an attribute of God. It's it's at it is who God is at his core. And I'm thinking of like First Timothy two thirteen. It says even if we're faithful or faithless, God is faithful because He cannot help Himself. It's like love is oozing out of Him because that is what He is. He cannot help but be love. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you for emphasizing that mm. for us, Travis. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to ask another question. Are there other times in the ministry of Jesus, because he's God in the flesh, he's showing mm -hmm. us who he is and what he stands for and what his kingdom is all about. Mm -hmm. Are there specific stories or encounters mm -hmm. that he had with individuals that show you his love and how he ministered mm -hmm. to those mm -hmm. around him? Puya. Oh, Brittany, there's just too many stories. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> uh, but what, one story that came to my mind is, uh, when uh, one of the Jewish leader's uh, son was sick and mm -hmm. he came to Jesus wanting to ask Jesus to heal his son, mm -hmm. right? And the, 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 the point that really touches my heart is Jesus never say no mm -hmm. to people who came to him seeking mm -hmm. for healing, Amen. either spiritually mm -hmm. or for physical healing. Mm -hmm. And from mm -hmm. the bigger perspective, in our previous lesson, we learned that somehow this earth is sucked into this cosmic conflict. And from the perspective of Jesus, I wonder if he sees this earth as kind of like the, the victim mm -hmm. of this war mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the enemy, Satan, has begun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he really, really loves us. We mm -hmm. see this yes. all throughout his ministry mm -hmm. on earth. So mm -hmm. he never refuses those who call mm -hmm. on him for help. That gives us encouragement today mm -hmm. because you may be going through a situation and you're calling on God for help. And we have confidence from these stories when he walked on this earth, he will answer you. He Amen. will answer the prayer of your heart, the, the cry of your heart. Rodney, please share with us what you see um, in the life and ministry of Christ. Mm. In Luke 23 verses 40 to 43, we see the reference there of Jesus being crucified between two thieves. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that there was one of the thieves who actually reached out to Jesus in penitence and he called out to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it's almost as if Jesus held back death just to say one more. And <laughs> mm -hmm. reassurance to that thief really, really helps me on my personal journey. Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. What an amazing story there with Jesus, even at the nth hour of his own death and also the death of the thief, just spent a little bit more time to save just one more for us. Amen. Amen. Mm. That shows the value of an individual, right? Every one of us is created in the image of God. And mm -hmm. he cares about each one of us. Mm -hmm. Like when he looked over Jerusalem and he saw, saw thousands of people, he cared about each one of them as individuals, not just a group. Mm -hmm. right. So he sees each one of us, no matter where we live on this planet, mm -hmm. he sees us individually, right? And cares mm -hmm. about us as if we were the only one Praise on God. this right. planet, God. Um, which right. is beautiful to see. Yes. I know there's lots more comments, but we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at um, a prophecy that Jesus gave and we're gonna see his love even in in this prophecy about destruction. Mm. So even when he's giving a word that seems hopeless, mm -hmm. he mixes hope in there, right? And gives us some encouragement. So we're going to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 20. Matthew 24, 15 through 20. And I'm gonna ask Lalika to read that for us, please. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew 24, verse 15 to 20. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken, by, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But all to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And I pray 
that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Alika. Mm. So where do we see God's love, the love of Christ in this prophecy? Mm. Yes, Alika. We see, uh, according to the story as well, that Jesus is warning mm. everybody to flee. Later on, when the Roman uh, army came and they invaded uh, Jerusalem, about to attack it, and uh, seemingly they had a, a, a small defeat, they flew away, and uh, the Christians remembered this prophecy, and they left to Pelea, the region um, beyond Jordan, and they were able to be saved because later on the Roman army came and mm -hmm. killed and mm -hmm. destroyed mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have him giving a warning so that people can be protected and escape, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if we look throughout Christ's ministry, he came to give us a way of escape, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. um, and here we see him emphasizing in mm -hmm. a, a physical battle that was yet to come, there's a way of escape and here's the, the way to get out. And when we look at history books, we actually find out there wasn't one Christian who perished that believed this prophecy of Jesus, that mm -hmm. when they, they saw what he warned them of and they fled, mm -hmm. they were saved. Mm -hmm. And so that just shows us in a, a physical sense what God wants to do spiritually for us because mm -hmm. he's offering a way of escape from planet Earth that is in turmoil and cosmic conflict, mm -hmm. and and he's showing us he is the only way out, right? Mm -hmm. um, Harold, do you wanted to add to that? I just, just wanted to add to the history because uh, Flavius Josephus, I mean, you can search him up, he did record, he even quoted Jesus like saying that he heard that Jesus say to the Christians that this was going to happen, so he says that no Christians perished, I mean, according to him, at least to the Christians who believe Jesus, mm -hmm. mm. they're not perished. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we have that in history. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to continue on in our lesson and we're going to look at how the early church um, went through difficulties, right? Um, they were saved from that destruction of Jerusalem, but as Christianity was spreading, they had some hardships that they went through. And um, we're not going to just look at the early Christian church. We're going to do kind of a scan of the whole scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and people who were faithful to God and what they endured, what they went through, um, as faithful to God. So can um, we're going to look at uh, several verses, and one of the most famous passages, I believe, on this topic is in Hebrews 11. Um, we often think of it as the hall of faith, right, of the faithful. Um, and we're going to look at Hebrews 11, verses 35 through 38. And I'm going to ask Scott to read that for us, please. Okay, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went, out, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Scott. That gives us a very vivid picture of what many faithful people of God suffered and went through for His sake. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at a few more verses and then we'll discuss them together. We're going to go to Acts 5, verses 17 through 18 next. And I'm going to ask Nicole if she'd be willing to read that for us. Acts 5, 17 through 18. Sure, I'm reading from the New International Version and it says, then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now we're going to go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. And I'm going to ask Rodney to please read that for us. Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rodney. And one more verse in Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 14, verse 19. And I'm going to ask Puya to read that for us, please. Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 
Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Mm. 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 And one more passage in the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. And I'm going to ask Leah to please read that for us. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 in the English Standard Version reads, Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Beautiful. Leah. There was a lot packed into those passages, mm -hmm. um, but what were some of the things that the faithful of God have experienced throughout time and many are still experiencing today. Mm -hmm. um, those of us who aren't going through those things sometimes forget this is still happening mm -hmm. around the world today. I'm mm -hmm. um, Scott. Right. Yeah. In our last study, we talked about how we're in the middle of a, of a war. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing here is casu casualties of the war mm -hmm. as Satan does his best to try to defeat God and try to defeat God's people. A lot of people suffer because of that um, death, um, other, other kinds of things. But I love this last verse that we read because it shows that no matter what the devil tries, ultimately he will not succeed. And, and so there's no need for us to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. reminding us of the hope we have in midst of all these trials. Gladys, please share with us. Well, one of the uh, Satan's um, targets is to discredit God, make us doubt his character. Mm. So, so when he presents all this suffering and, and, and persecution and mockery and people even say sonning too, mm. it's like, basically preparing an example to the world to say, mm. see, why, why will he allow that if it's good? And that's one of the questions that, especially during our times, I hear a lot of, of my non-Christians friends say, say, if God is good, why are you going through this? Mm -hmm. If God is good, why did this is this coming my way? Why didn't car accident? And he just wants to discredit God's character. Mm -hmm. But like Scott said, you know, God wins at the end. It's just his yeah. love is going to flow through Amen. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gladys. Right. Travis, please share with us what's on your heart. So I just kind of want to build on what Gladys had just said. Um, so people may be watching and, and wonder, why are these people suffering? Uh, why are these people going through this stuff? And I was just thinking about 2 Timothy 3.12, and it says that all those who live godly in Christ Jesus uh, will suffer uh, persecution. So when we align ourselves with Christ, when we begin to live godly and trust our life with him, the cosmic conflict becomes real. The attacks will come. It will happen. But praise God that he is faithful and will take us through those things. Amen. 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 Travis. Amen. <clears throat> we're going to look at a verse in Acts and see what kind of attitude we can have when we're going through these Ooh. times of suffering. Mm -hmm. And Amazing. when we're struggling, um, mm -hmm. what, how can we respond in those situations? So let's go to Acts chapter 5, verses 40 through 42. And I'm going to ask Harold if he'd be willing to read that for us. Acts chapter 5, verses 40 through 42. Okay, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing mm -hmm. that they were counted worthy to <laughs> suffer dishonor for the name. Mm -hmm. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. Hmm. Amen. Mm. Wow, what a testimony. Yes. So what kind of attitude hmm. did they display and what can we learn from them? Harold, you wanted to comment well, on that verse. Oh yeah, they were rejoicing because Jesus did tell them, actually Peter, that in this world you will have tribulations. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I think that's in John uh, 16, verse mm -hmm. 33. Mm -hmm. yeah. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So you're not suffering alone. We can't, we can't forget that. We have Jesus on our side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they said that they, they counted it worthy to suffer dishonor for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, Satan is trying to bring that dishonor 
but they're trying to uplift that honor that be only belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And through their actions, which is loving, it's like that's how God's character gets magnified. Mm -hmm. So we see that there, many people will be like surprised and impressed, like, wow, these people are honoring God even in the midst of suffering. Mm -hmm. And they have mm -hmm. peace. That's right. right. Yes. Yeah, and we have to remember, it doesn't matter who we are, whether we're with Christ or not, we're going to go through suffering. Right. Mm -hmm. It's how are we going to respond to that suffering when That's it happens right. to us mm -hmm. that shows a difference in our character and who we're holding on to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Malika, I saw that you had a comment. <laughs> yes, who we are holding on to. Is that relationship with the Jesus the King allowed us to go through being cut into, sewn into, with the gladness and thinking, well, heaven will be cheap enough. Mm. Ellen White in the book, Great Controversy, she said that by defeat they conquered. Mm. And then the history says that uh, the blood of the Christians were like seed mm -hmm. because it proved their injustice mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the eyes of people. Amen. So, mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. thank you. Wow. Yeah. Rodney, please share with us what you'd like from your heart and your thoughts. Brittany, when I read that text, um, I, I said to myself, this is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if, if we were to be very real, um, this is not, this life isn't easy. And for us, just like these apostles, to be able to get to the point where they, are, they were beaten, mm -hmm. at the same time, thereafter they continue to do the work of the lord mm -hmm. in order to get to that level clearly we have to have a very intimate relationship with jesus mm -hmm. to Amen. do that yeah. and so it behoves us um for, for us to really really have this intrinsic assessment of ourselves to say where am i with my relationship with god because as travis said whether we like it or not, if, if we're going in the direction and having a relationship with God, we're going to be persecuted in some way, shape or form. But to be able to have this attitude as the apostles, or, we can't do that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is Holy Spirit work in transforming mm -hmm. our lives to be able to exhibit that. So mm -hmm. we continue to this journey, um, as, as, as we know, um, with our relationship with God so that we can get to that point of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I was so impressed from the text that they didn't stop, right? They were commanded after they were suffered, you know, you're not allowed to talk about this Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. They weren't intimidated. Mm -hmm. They weren't fearful. They continued on with the mission. Yeah. And that is only because of the power of God inside of them, right? Mm -hmm. Inside of each one of us that when we're going through difficulties and suffering that we continue on with God's mission. We don't give up. We don't just say, well, you know, maybe that wasn't God's will because I faced this difficulty. Mm -hmm. But we keep going and we keep mm -hmm. looking to Jesus, the one who's gone before us. Amen. Um, what a wonderful reminder for us. Now we're going to look at the first Christian martyr uh, for his faith in the, in the New Testament times. And we're going to go to Stephen, mm -hmm. the deacon, in Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. And I'm going to ask Sabina to please read that for us. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Uh, the book of Acts, um, starting on verse 8, says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blas blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as Ooh. the face of an angel. Mm. Mm. Wow, what a wow. testimony. And here we're seeing a little bit from last lesson, yeah. the deceiver, 
the father mm -hmm. of lies, bringing mm -hmm. these l accusations that were not true mm -hmm. against Stephen, right? Mm -hmm. Stirring up crowds of people um, with these things that didn't happen, and the same thing they did at Jesus' trial, right? They mm -hmm. got false witnesses to say things that um, they were twisting the truth. But mm -hmm. here we see in the midst of all these lies that the character of Christ is being seen on Stephen's face, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He's shining, uh, like Moses did when he came down from being in God's presence. He's mm -hmm. shining, um, and we can see God's character. Now, we're going to continue on in the story because I wish it ended here, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we're going to look at verses 54 through 60, and I encourage you at home, uh, read the whole chapter because you'll read a beautiful sermon that Stephen mm. preached mm -hmm. um, as a testimony, um, mm -hmm. his, his final testimony. Mm. And uh, please read that on your own time, but we're going to see what happened to Stephen after he preached that sermon, after he um, answered some of their accusations. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened in verses 54 through 60 of Acts chapter 7. I'm going to ask Scott to read that for us, please. All right, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Mm. And the mm. witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Mm -hmm. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Mm. Mm. And mm. when he had said this, he fell asleep. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Scott. What can we learn from Stephen's life and especially the end of his life, Nicole? Well, it's funny because Rodney mentioned it earlier that, you know, we read things about praising during tribulation and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But when you read this verse 55, it says he was full of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can get through <laughs> all of our tribulations being full of the Spirit. And that comes from having a relationship, not just getting it from someone else, but really truly having that work that we put in to have a relationship with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So the whole, we have to be filled full, with the Holy Spirit. Full. <laughs> Travis, please share with us. So I, I agree with Nicole. I mean, fascinating that a, that a man can be stoned and, and mistreated that way and look up in, in, into heaven and, and uh, have this experience seeing Jesus at the right hand of the Father. What a miracle of God. But then I, as we finished verse 60, I was thought, wow, this guy not only um, faced persecution without fear, he was more concerned that these people would not be charged with the sins of killing him than even his own death. And I thought, that is amazing. What love. It sounded like Jesus on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And uh, I agree. This is, this is the power of the Spirit of God. This is what um, a Holy Spirit-filled person filled with the love of Jesus looks like. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Amen. Travis. Amen. Amen. And yes. it reminds me so clearly that it doesn't matter what persecution or suffering we're going through, mm -hmm. God is with us. Yes. Just like Stephen looked up to heaven, he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. I've read many testimonies, modern day testimonies of people who went through persecution and how they sensed God's presence with them mm -hmm. closer at that moment mm. than they'd ever experienced in their whole life. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why people who were burned at the stake were able to sing. Mm -hmm. because God's presence was with them and they knew that they were not alone in that suffering. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a wonderful reminder for us. It doesn't matter what lies ahead, what kind of suffering or trial may come to us. We don't need to be afraid because Jesus will be with us. Mm -hmm. He's not leaving us alone in those times Amen. of suffering. Amen. He's walking the road with us and he already went before us and experienced it himself. Mm -hmm. So we have one who understands what we're going through and is with us as we go through Hallelujah. it, which Amen. is wonderful to remember. 
Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go to a passage, one of my favorites, um, on this topic that talks about the assurance we can have no matter what we face in Romans chapter 8. Mm-hmm. Um, Romans 8 verse 35 is where we're going to start. And I'm going to ask Leah to read that for us. Romans 8 35 and then we're also going to skip down to verses 38 through 39. The English Standard Version reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? And then verse 38. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 What a beautiful promise Mm -hmm. that shows us it doesn't matter what we go through on this life, in this planet, this cosmic conflict, that God's love is still present, Mm -hmm. that um, He's with us and that He loves us and that what we're going through is not a reflection of His love or the condition of his love towards us or how he feels Mm -hmm. about us but he loves us no matter what we're going through Mm. and i think it's important uh, Brittany, to to remember he's not just speaking theoretically here yeah Yeah, he's been shipwrecked and stoned Mm -hmm. and left for dead yeah so he suffered and considered that to be a privilege Mm -hmm. as a follower of jesus Mm -hmm. and he has experienced when he was in prison singing, you know, at midnight, Mm -hmm. that the love of God had not left him, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which makes me think that the devil probably says, well, look at these bad things happening. God, God doesn't love you at all. Mm -hmm. But we experience the love of God even in the midst Mm -hmm. of those trials. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for reminding us of that. Now we're going to look at promises. I want you to share your favorite promise that helps you through times of trial Mm. or suffering. Um, When you think back on your life, what you clung to or what you're currently clinging to Mm. to get you through the difficulties Mm. that we face each and every day. Um, Mm -hmm. So if you have a verse, please share with us, team. And those at home, we'd love to hear your favorite promise. Please write to us and tell us what promise you hold on to when you're going Mm. through times of difficulty. Go ahead, Nicole, share yours with us. So it's short, but it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. It's Philippians 4.13. I always think of that text whenever I'm going through anything. And it says, uh, the New International Version of Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I need, mm-hmm. the strength from Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen. Beautiful, Amen. thank you. Yes. Rodney, I see that you have a favorite promise you'd like to share with us. And it's taken from Psalm 34 and verse 7. Psalm 34 and verse 7. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Mm. So there are times, Brittany and team, when I feel fearful. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, we, we, we cannot go through this life all by ourselves. And the previous text that we read was, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Notice that the text was talking about the love of Christ. That's not where the issue is. Christ will always love us. The issue is more so with us in terms Mm -hmm. of our love for Christ. And so we cannot have that same type of love without the indwelling Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity that we all have to build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rodney. Puya, I'll take one more promise of the word and um, how that has impacted you before we move on with our lesson. Mm. For me, I, I, I have too many texts, so I'll just say, <laughs> I'll just say it's more of this framework that the scripture presents to us that has really helped me in moments of suffering or uh, times when I don't understand why you know certain things are happening in my life. In the context of our study here, this cosmic level conflict helps me understand that there is this two levels of uh, perspective that we always need to see. The immediate perspective that we see within this world and the bigger picture on the cosmic level Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I am, we are, and the whole world is a part of a greater conflict where 
we don't always understand the big picture because our perspective is so small. Mm -hmm. And so that gives mm -hmm. me hope when I'm going through difficult times that yeah. there must be a reason why God is allowing this to mm -hmm. happen. And I think that's what the apostles, the disciples, and down through the history of Christian Christianity mm -hmm. that the, the Christians had, being able to see beyond just this world. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank right. You. I will take one more. Gladys, please share with us. Yeah, for me, um, Psalm 46, mm. uh, verses uh, 1 and 2 especially, well, the whole psalm, but that ver those verses about God being a refuge, mm. and then the, the, the psalm just goes on to say all these things, the mountain shake, the, the, the rivers foam, everything, and it's just like a mirror to my life and, and the things and my health journey that it just keeps me grounded mm -hmm. to know them. Like um, Puya, Puya was saying, there must be a reason. Mm -hmm. However, God is what keeps me grounded. His word just reminds me that it doesn't matter what goes on, mm -hmm. He is there with me. He is my tower. He is my strength. Mm -hmm. So the, the words that God gave us in His word are the ones that keeps us encouragement to go through the trials, like these uh, martyrs that went through, mm -hmm. knowing that there's something beyond and he's the God of love that is waiting for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Gladys. Well, we're going to go into the next part of our lesson that's talking about how we can reflect mm -hmm. the love of Jesus. We've seen that in some of the examples we already read and discussed. Many people, as they were suffering, were reflecting the love of God. Mm -hmm. And we realize we can't reflect it on our own. It's only by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, by having that relationship with Christ. And when we look at the early church, we see that um, they were always helping each other and they were always helping those in need. We see that love of Christ exemplified in their actions. It's not just a thought or a word, but it's, it's action, right? Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to skip ahead to Matthew 25 and verses 31 through 40, where Jesus actually gave a parable. And in it, he tells us that when we're doing these acts of service, we may think that we're doing it for this little girl over here or this man on the side of the road here, but we're going to find out who we're truly doing it for mm -hmm. and the one that should be our motivation. Um, Matthew 25 verses 31 through 40, and I'm going to ask Harold to read that for us. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep on His right, but the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you... <sighs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked <sighs> and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And and the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Such a moving passage, right? Of, of how Jesus, how when we are doing something for someone else, it's actually Jesus uh, working through us, but that person that we're impacting is seeing a reflection of who he is and the one we're doing it for is 
him. It's all for his glory, right? Um, it's all to reveal the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. And I imagine the universe, Brittany, looking on and saying, that's what the character of God looks like. Mm -hmm. right. It's not just about us looking good, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but reflecting the immeasurable, unfailing love wow. of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, why is showing the love of God to one another a sign that we are genuine disciples of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lalika. Jesus in First John, uh, in John chapter 13, I don't remember the verse, I think 35 or 34, mm -hmm. he says that in loving each other, they will know that you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. We see that throughout the first centuries, Christian in a big pandemic, first uh, in the hundreds and two hundred, they selfishly uh, gave their lives for people. They ministered, they were an army of nurses taking care of those who were sick and they even died but their example made that so many others converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's by loving that people will see, mm -hmm. not by speaking. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Sabina, please share with us. Yes, I love when uh, the Word of God says that we love because He loved us first. Mm -hmm. I find personally that there is no way out for me except for loving. Mm -hmm. When I really understand the love God has first poured on my heart for me, and this really moves me and motivates me to love because mm -hmm. I cannot do anything different than that when I understand this love of God mm -hmm. for me. Thank you all for sharing. And I know there's much more that could be said, but when we come back to the whole point of this whole cosmic conflict, it's revealing the character of God and his mm -hmm. character is love. And he is calling us into that loving relationship with him so that we can reflect it to those around us. So may we ask him to teach us how to love how he loves. May we ask him to fill us with his spirit so that we can actually show the love of Christ to those around us. Amen. Pastor Derek. Thank you so much, Brittany. Well, I was moved by the study today mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm sure that you were too. Uh, just thinking about the love of God. And, and, and I just want to thank Harold for reading that scripture like it, like it should be read. Like, be astounded at the love of God and, and for the tears in our eyes, not because we despair, but be, because we rejoice in the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. May we mm -hmm. reflect the beautiful character of God and be motivated by love. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in this great battle where there's violence and lies, may the beautiful character, your character, be manifested in us because of a living relationship with you is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. Moving study, uh, and certainly it should be. Behold what manner of love the Father's given to us that we should be called the sons and daughters of God. My friend, embrace that love with a thankful heart and then go out and be a blessing to those around you.